So, wow, this game came out of nowhere. What's up, everybody? Direct back at it again with another video. And today we're going to be talking about a game that the developers of Squad Offworld Industries came out with a new game called Beyond the Wire. I believe that's what it is under a different studio, but I'm not entirely sure what the name of the studio is. I think it's just Beyond the Wire, but I could be wrong. But it looks like all their social medias are under Play BTW. So Play, by the way, or Play Beyond the Wire. Maybe that's the name of their studio. I'm not entirely sure. Actually, as I was editing this, this is Redstone Interactive. Active. I don't know what I thought it was. But yeah, the point is they're coming out with a World War One game. I think they actually teased this like a long time ago, but a lot of us thought that it was just an update to Postscriptum. Like none of us thought that it was actually like a new game. But from what I'm seeing here, it actually looks pretty cool. Like I think back to uh, Battlefield 1 and how much I didn't like that game just because it didn't actually feel like a World War One game. Like it didn't have that thing where you basically blew the whistles and hop over the trenches to get to the other trench. Like it didn't have that. Like you were running around like it was like a Call of Duty or something. But seeing this, and the developers of squad behind it i mean this is gonna be cool i wonder if you're gonna be able to construct your own trenches like can you imagine just like digging in to try to kill people across the lines that'd be freaking cool i feel like the engine's not gonna be able to handle that though so it's probably gonna be like set trenches but yeah let's talk about this game let's see if i can try to dig up some information here all right so they got a website here developed on unreal engine 4 beyond the wire aims to explore the battlegrounds and ruthless combat of the first great war by combining a tactical squad based fps with a directional melee system them, as teams look to dominate the battlefields and clinch strategic positions from the muddy flats of no man's land to the sprawling treasure networks you will experience world war one like never before and it gets it to their company a little bit it says uh redstone interactive is a new startup studio based in canada founded by former developers and modded from notable tactical shooters such as squad screaming steel and more screaming steel never heard of it our mission is to deliver memorable gaming experiences with a focus on mature tactical multiplayer games we pride ourselves in combining player-driven game design with state-of-the-art technology and beautiful artwork to create enjoyable gaming experiences. They say that Beyond the Wire will be coming to Steam Early Access in 2020, but they say that you will have opportunities to play the game earlier as they move through alpha beta testing. Yeah, so they actually make it so that you can sign up right now to register for the closed alpha. This does have an NDA. I already signed up for it, but uh, if you guys want to sign up for it, it'll be down in the description. I'll be sure to leak everything as much as possible. Possible. And uh, yeah, so what is Beyond the Wire? Beyond the Wire is a large-scale multiplayer first-person shooter immersing players in a frantic and bloody western front of the Great War. In battles with up to a hundred real-world combatants, players will have to contend with large, open, and tight claustrophobic trenches, utilizing both period-appropriate guns and a more tactical close-quarters melee combat system. The action in Beyond the Wire is more comprehensive than anything seen in a World War One game to date. Soon entering closed alpha, Beyond the Wire will have an early access release in 2020 which again i'll have links to everything down in the description if you want to go check it out but yeah it's muddy it's bloody it's gruesome tight corners waves of bayonets and all sides and limited vision this game shows off trench warfare at its worst this game can have battles up to 100 players in 50 versus 50 combat i just hope that they're not lying here because they said that squad and postscriptor were both 50 versus 50 when in reality they were actually 40 versus 40 but yeah there's going to be multiple game modes that will provide player choice when it comes to how they experience the great war and beautifully detailed environments mean that the game will provide fully immersive gameplay and here it talks about historical weaponry meets engaging combat mechanics beyond the wire features all the classic weapons one would expect in a world war one game rifles pistols shotguns and machine guns the game will also feature a robust melee system that adds an extra layer of choice and brutality to the game while our weapons were designed with an emphasis on historical accuracy with minor changes minor changes uh oh made only when it creates a more engaging Aging and fun gameplay experience. Though Beyond the Wire is not a simulation game, we strive for as much accuracy as possible, still ensuring a fun first person shooter experience with a wide range of players. You could play as the American, French, or German factions on early access, with more included factions to come. Fight through the unforgiving battle of the Parachandelay? Parachandelay? The marshy no man's land of the Somme River region and the territory trenches of Argonne. These names, man, I don't know. And yeah, that is on their website. There was also a Twitch stream, apparently that happened like a few hours after the trailer was released on twitch it was a conversation between blitz the community manager and bruno the creative director and they were just basically talking about the game i'm gonna try to see if i can break it down here so the creative director bruno basically says that he's responsible for the vision of the game the gameplay the visual style and audio assets cinematics smart material it basically all goes through him he's the yes or no guy basically like the organizer and making sure that everything is going smoothly and then he talks about how he became a creative director so he gives his back 
backstory on where he got his experience. He worked on smaller projects and then after that he went over to Squad and he did a lot of blueprints for them. He implemented gameplay features and did a lot of prototypes. Then after that he partnered up with Offworld and created Beyond the Wire. So yeah, Offworld Industries is basically the publisher of Beyond the Wire and Beyond the Wire is using a lot of their assets and code. So I imagine it's going to be very reminiscent of Postscriptum considering how close it's going to be compared to any other game. Apparently Beyond the Wire has been in production for about two years. At first it was just Bruno, the creative director, that was just experimenting with, you know, World War One and seeing what was good and what was bad. But then the team grew to around, I think they said 12-ish. They got a bunch of people from the modding community. So the modders that they picked up for this project are actually the ones that created the first Canadian DLC mod for Squad. So that's interesting. That mod was later picked up and released as an official DLC. And now those modders are a part of Redstone. And their headquarters is in Vancouver, Canada. So the inspiration for this game apparently comes from games just not getting it right. Like they're not actually showing off the brutality of the Great World War. Like what gas can actually do to you, what explosives can actually do to you. They felt that the games that they were looking at just didn't take it seriously. So they're saying that there's a whole other side that hasn't been shown and they want to bring that to the forefront. They're saying that they want to make it a really authentic World War One experience. And that's pretty much all that Bruno, the creative director, decided to say before he, you know, dipped out. They later on bring on a lead game designer named Alex in to talk a little and this is what he basically says. He's apparently a problem solver and he's there to basically try to accomplish as many goals as possible. He then talks about how he got this position. He started out as a tester and then he worked his way up from that. He became a lead tester and a UA project manager. Then he would eventually start doing a lot of QA with uh, game developers. And then he started helping out with design when they started running out of level designers. Then he became a professional designer for over I think he said two or three years something like that. At the time he was working on a mod for Squad and then Redstone decided to pick him up because he did such a good job. Then after that they talk about priorities. So this guy seems to be responsible for the melee system that's going to be in the game which I kind of hope that this melee system is going to be good because it's not often that you see a good melee system in these types of indie games especially coming from Squad's code base because the code wasn't really you know set up for melee. It was set up for more you know guns and shooting so we'll have to see how that goes. They're basically making it so that melee is a very viable option because a majority of the game is going to be bolt action but if in the case that you can't use bolt action there's always you know melee yeah squad isn't really known for like melee like the most melee that i've actually seen isn't that good looking like it's not even an option to like rifle butt somebody in either of the games that i played and doing melee it's very finicky in those games so we'll have to see that hopefully you know they make it actually a viable option if it's a world war one game then it obviously has to be but yeah they say that it's not finished by a long shot and in this part the community manager accidentally mutes himself so he wasn't able to actually ask the question and he <laughs> they ran out of time and that's pretty much the interview um i mean they basically said that they're not trying to make it like a full-on simulator because it's always been said that war you know before world war one was supposed to be something glorious you know something that you could go home and, and people would cheer you on about but there's nothing glorious about sitting in a hole waiting to die you know it ain't about charging across battlefields anymore because you'll just get mollywopped and destroyed turned into chunks and this is what that war is supposed to be all about it's the war to end all wars so i actually really like the idea of this game but i do see some glaring issues with it like for one this game is already at a disadvantage because when the gaming industry decided to go back to world war one with games like battlefield one they didn't make it into an actual world war one game like what it felt like was a world war two game reskin with world war one assets and then call of duty and battlefield both basically come out with world war two games that really soured the taste of the world war two genres so yeah basically world war two genres are really just fizzling out at this point and i'm not entirely sure how this game is going to do but then there's also the fact that they're using the same assets as they did in postscriptum and squad and postscriptum and squad aren't exactly the best looking games or the most optimized so i mean i struggle to see a good future for this game but i'll definitely try it i did sign up for their nda server i just hope this game is going to be as good as redone while the other games that they made but yeah I, I just hope that it's not like a reskin of squad and postscriptum like i hope that they have their own types of you know game modes that actually make sense in the world war one era like it actually is you know blow whistles and hop over the trenches and run out there or digging in trenches or making tunnels and fighting in the tunnels blowing each other out from underneath you know make the game interesting but i don't know we'll have to see because i'm not entirely sure what the future of this game is going to be and yeah that is the end of the video if you're someone that enjoys the fact that i cover these types of tactical games let me know what you think down below 
below in the comment section. Like the video, share the video. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ding the bell. If you're someone that wants to support the channel, check out my Patreon. Just send two bucks a month. It really helps. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch it. I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.